Hey, what's up guys? Lord Civic here, and today we're going to be talking about the new release Sony A95L. I'm here to talk about this absolute tactical marvel that I've had the honor of owning for a little more than a week now. And I can just say right out the back, I freaking love this thing. I have a lot that I want to say. And, you know, this has already been crowned as the king of TVs of 2023. And for good reason, this thing is just absolutely mind blowing with everything it does. Now, before we hop in, there's some people I want to thank. I want to thank first Kobe and Steven. Uh, they're with the Geek Squad um, at Best Buy. I had the Total Tech membership and the old membership used to come with free installs. And I still have that because I'm on the older membership. They came and took down my CX, put it in the box, um, put out my A95L. The sound wasn't working at first. And we realized we needed to uh, cycle and power off the Arcam AVR31, which I've seen a lot of you guys mentioned in the comments. Yes, I'll be making a video on it very soon. Um, but I just want to say thank you to them. Uh, then also, I want to say thank you to Preston at my local Best Buy for letting me know that this TV was in stock. And then Mr. Josh Winters for selling it to me. Now, saying that, I have a whole bunch of smaller scale videos that I want to do about this excellent TV in addition to this early impressions video. Um, I already kind of have ideas of what I'm going to do, but if there's any videos or even like a question you have, please make sure to comment that below. Um, with saying that, if you guys like what you see, please make sure to hit, hit that like subscribe button. And with saying that, let's hop right in. Now, the first thing I want to talk about, which a lot of you guys have been mentioning in the comments, is why did I go with the Sony A95L? You guys know me as a LG fanboy and I guess by extension as well, Samsung because of my super ultra wide uh, monitors that I've gotten a lot of over the year. And it's a short answer. You know, Sony in a lot of categories is the absolute best. And for the longest, they were behind in the gaming category. That was like the biggest thing for me. I'm a huge gamer. And as somebody that's gonna be at any given point of the year, playing games at least 50% of the time, or you know, with Spider-Man 2 coming out, it's gonna be up to like 80, 90% of the time. I need my gaming features. And that conclude, includes variable refresh rate, which at the point when I purchased my LG CX, I don't think the Sony TVs supported variable refresh rate, which is just absolutely insane because they make the PS5. And I understand they're not in the same Sony division or whatever, but they're all under the same umbrella. So that was just ludicrous. I think, and I might be wrong in this, they did not support 120 Hertz as well, which for console gamers at the time wasn't that important but you know as a pc gamer i need at least 120 hertz when i'm gaming um playing cyberpunk 2077 on this tv is just mind-blowing um and i'll talk about that in a second but regardless also last point sony tvs only support two hdmi 2.1 ports which ooh, the, the amount of problems that come with that is just insane you have an older receiver that doesn't support hdmi 2.1 you have an e-arc port already taken one HDMI 2.1 port and then you have to decide you want to use your PlayStation your PC or your Xbox and then you know if you have a Sonos same same problem or any other type of thing that needs to go in the ER cable so that's why I made the investment into the Arcam AVR 31 um, earlier this year and you know I, I got to talk about that that's a whole nother video and stuff like that but I researched extensively when choosing all the different new equipment that I have here today but regardless, um, I looked in awe at the Sony TVs every time I went to Best Buy. The way that they handled detail and the upscaling tech with the XR uh, Sony chip, the clear image chip, it's just absolutely impressive. But the biggest draw was the lack of gaming features compared to like LG or Samsung's. Now, the reason I didn't go with Samsung is I don't really like the way they oversaturate colors on their displays. Now, with saying that, you'd be like, Lord Civic, you have a uh, Samsung G9 only. You've been talking so much about it. It's a gaming device, strictly for gaming. If colors are a little oversaturated in gaming, that's fine for me, but I'm not going to be watching live action content on a display that's not going to be trying to get colors as accurate as possible. Now, with saying that, Sony TVs are just absolutely fantastic. And as I said, the lack of game features was a big draw for me of not getting them. Now saying that, Sony has raised the freaking bar in every category, which I'm gonna go into in a second. And my God, is this like the closest thing to a perfect display I've ever seen? Like, honestly, with it all said and done, by the time I review this thing, I've only watched three movies so far. I've watched Coraline, um, John Wick 4 with my cousins, um, and then, just the other night, I watched Alien, which, my God, what a fantastic, I mean, they were all fantastic movies, but Alien is just, just 
the perfect horror film and like the way that this TV just has the detail and stuff is just impeccable. Now saying that, dang, I promised myself I wasn't gonna. Now with that said, because a lot of you guys have pointed it out to me, um, the way that this TV handles detail is just fantastic. I remember when I was working at Best Buy earlier this year, Rob, who works for Sony, and I can't remember his specific job title, I apologize for that. He took me through a walkthrough of like the way Sony, Samsung, and LG handle content. And honestly, for the longest for me, it was between LG G3 and the uh, A95L, which wasn't out at the time. But he showed me the A80L and then the LG C3. And it was just absolutely insane and eye-opening for what he showed me. So it was a Tom Hanks TV demo, not Tom Hanks TV demo, it was show, some TV show Tom Hanks went in, or I believe a movie, I don't know. Anyway, he was sitting at a diner and basically the outside on the window was able to get brighter on the LG C3, which was impressive in itself. And I have to applaud um, LG for being able to have the brightest display this year. Now, regardless, just because the outside diner was getting as bright as it was, a lot of details were lost because it was trying to get as bright as possible, but not retain all the fine points and different stuff, like the cuts on Tom Hanks on, the hair, the details on his face and different stuff like that. And even though the Sony ADL was not able to get as bright, the way that it handles detail was just absolutely amazing. And I've noticed that on this TV when playing games and stuff such like, such like that. And it's really impressive to own this display and now see it with my own content that I'm playing and watching. Now, what I wanna talk about next is the culmination of features that just make this TV almost unbelievable. Like I'm gonna be explaining this stuff and like if somebody told me this, I it really you just gotta like see it to believe it. The culmination of features on this TV is unlike anything I've not only seen on like just a display, but any piece of technology ever. Like it's just absolutely insane. I mean, this TV costs five thousand dollars, and you know I have to keep reminding myself that when I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the most amazing thing that I've ever seen. But it should be like it's five grand, it's five racks, it's five G's. Now, regardless, the picture quality best I've ever seen on a consumer level display. It blows anything else out of the water. Um, watching John Wick Ford, the details of people's face and just different stuff like that was just absolutely amazing. Cyberpunk 2077, I, I, you know, let me say this. The TV's only as good as the content that you are able to put on display with it. So, you know, obviously like 4K Blu-ray movies are gonna look fantastic. Gaming's gonna look fantastic, but obviously, if you have, you know, a PC that you have thrown like thousands of dollars into, like me, for my 49 39 k it's going to just blow anything else, you know, out of the water. Cyberpunk 2077 is legitimately, on my computer in this display, the best I've ever seen in any game ever, bar none. I booted up the game, I legitimately could not believe my eyes. The picture quality was off the charts. Details look impeccable. Everything from the roads to the buildings to the character models, even the trash. The trash on the freaking ground looked sharper and richer than some high quality models in some games. Like, it was impeccable. The next thing that I had to talk about, quantum dot technology. QD, QD OLEDs are, you know, I, I was a big like OLED fan. QD OLEDs are just mind boggling. Color to a ridiculous degree. Now with saying that, it's not color to a ridiculous degree where it goes over the end and it's just unreal, unrealistically colored. Everything is accurate as hell. This A95L is more color accurate than my professionally calibrated LG CX out of the box. I have a color pattern generator, uh, what's it called, the x Rite or whatever, that I can professionally calibrate this TV. I don't know if I will, because, you know, I honestly, when I look at this, I feel like freaking Thanos at the end of Endgame after, you know, not Endgame, at the end of Infinity War, when he snapped, and, you know, he just rested in the middle of his garden or whatever. I'm watching whatever the hell I'm watching. I don't feel like I have to change anything. Out of the box, I feel like, I'm literally looking at a perfect display. I've never had that peace of mind with any piece of technology, not even a display, that I was just like, dang, this is absolutely the best it gets. Now on top of that, in addition to rich colors, this TV and the biggest thing that I was looking forward to with these new models of TVs is the brightness level. That's been the biggest 
let down for OLED TVs for years. They just did not get bright enough. And you know, as somebody that in my old, where I lived before, the windows weren't facing my TV, but now they are. And you know, someday, sometimes during the day, I like to open my windows. I was playing uh, The Last of Us Part Two earlier this year. I had the window open. I can barely see what was happening on the screen. I am playing right now Final Fantasy 16, which is a very, not even like dark theme game, but it's like very dark. Like, you know, there's a lot of nighttime secrets and stuff like that. Anytime I would have to make sure the shades were closed every single minute that I was playing it. I can play with the windows open and not only can I see the whole image of the screen perfectly fine, but things like torches and the icon effects, is just absolutely mind blowing. I watched Coraline the other day and the details on all of that stop motion, I don't know, mannequins? I don't know the specific name. It was mind blowing, legitimately mind blowing. I, I, I feel like I'm seeing stuff in a totally new light. Now, this thing is so crazy, and let me tell you the thing that's probably impressed me, or one of the things that's impressed me the most, because every time I turn this thing on and whatever I watch or play, I'm impressed by it. I watched Alien on Saturday. I watched it a year ago, or two years ago on my CX for the first time. Fantastic film or whatever. There was two sequences that would not have hit the same if I was watching on any other display. And I, well, maybe on like a mini LED, but I would, no, 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 it wouldn't hit the same because you wouldn't get the black levels like you would. There's a sequence towards the uh, middle of the film, you know, with uh, what, Dallas, I think is his name. I might be wrong on that, I'm sorry. I've only seen it twice and I should know all the names of the character, but I hope I got that right. Regardless, he's walking through the vents or whatever, you know, and they're like, guys, the alien, he's in here. Look out, he's coming right towards you. There's a moment where he's holding his flamethrower and the TV handles this detail so freaking well where the monster comes out from behind him out of pitch darkness and like his light thing is like not bleeding, there's no black crust, there's not anything. Legitimately, I'm not gonna lie, legitimately when that happened and he just appeared on the black, I've seen the movie before, I just didn't remember that sequence, I screamed. I freaking scream because that was like, and I'm not scared easily by horror movies. And I mean, Alien's scary, but it's not really that scary to me. It's more like a fun little ride. I love the cinematography, stuff like that. But I was legitimately scared because of the way that this TV like handled the content and how it was displayed. Now the other thing, towards the end of the movie, with Ripley, you know, at the end when uh, she's back the ship because he said it to self-destruct, I, all the strobe lights and all alarms and stuff were going off. And let me tell you, this was one of the craziest things of any visual I've ever seen. I'm not talking about just movies, I'm talking about in real life. I would be hard pressed to see anything as impressive as it was. And then again, it's this this way that's doing it. It's not just the 4K transfer, which is fantastic by itself. Regardless, she's walking through the ship. At that point, all the lights are blaring and it's to a ridiculous degree. I don't even know if it's reaching the peak brightness of the screen, but the white lights are going off and the whole room, I'm talking about the room that I'm watching the TV in, the whole room is illuminated to a ridiculous degree. And if my windows were open, I would think people would think I'm having some disco or EDM party. It was ridiculously bright. And at that point, it was also with the flamethrower she was holding in her hand and it was so, perfectly contrasted in color and detail. It was bright, so I felt like I was there. At one point, I was like, dang, I'm so glad I'm not prone to seizures. Then at another point, I was like, am I prone to seizures? And, you know, and I, I, you know, I don't wanna say like, I mean that seriously, but this thing, <laughs> this thing gets ridiculously bright. Color, detail of facial textures, everything, it's just, I'm just rambling on, but like, I honestly have never been so impressed with a display. This TV does absolutely everything that I want to a ridiculous degree. I'm just raving on and on about it, different stuff like that. I obviously gotta like, you know, fine tune it. There's so many more movies I wanna watch. I need to watch Joker. I wanna watch Scott Pilgrim. I wanna watch Back to the Future. I need to watch Lawrence of Arabia, which I've never seen before. And there's just so much. Like, this TV has given me the urge again to just watch and play every single piece of content that I have. Like Spider-Man 2 comes out this Friday and oh my gosh, I can't even imagine what's gonna look like on this display. I'm really legitimately so, so excited. This TV has just gotten me excited to just watch and play stuff again. That's all I have to say. 
and I know it's so expensive and you know it does all stuff better than the LG G3 and S95C but it's up to you to decide hey is it worth that price and different stuff like that because from a lot of stuff I've only seen differences of maybe like 5% in some categories like 10 or 20% but for me as an enthusiast it's really nice to finally have a device that leaves me the peace of mind of hey I'm legitimately watching or playing whatever I am in the absolute best way possible I honestly feel that a lot of software that I put on this TV the TV outclasses it and it's like just you know in a world of diminishing returns it's so amazing to see a device and enjoy a device and own a device that just blows my mind the way it does now saying that, as I said before, if there's anything you guys want me to talk about with this TV or any games you'd like to see or any questions I can answer, please make sure to put that in the comments below. Now saying that, thank you guys again so much for watching. When saying that, I hope you guys have a good day.